All right, right, let's get right to it. Brady's top five observations from the start of the Seahawks offseason program. Yeah, no, this is a ranked, but these are in no particular order. Don't tell people that. Don't tell people. So number one is clearly the most important. State secrets. Number one, clearly the most important. Yes. Okay, number five. Mike McDonald's personality really comes out, I think, in these post practice settings. And maybe it's just, you know, the product of he's more comfortable than he was when he sat on that podium mm. at first and had it came off as very intense. But his I've noticed that in his post practice interviews, he just seems a lot more comfortable. He's more lighthearted. You hear some jokes thrown around, uh, certainly than he was like at the start of it. And then, you know, when you see him in kind of sitting next to John Schneider, like in the post draft press conference settings, uh, you know, there was a moment after one of the OTAs where Devin Witherspoon was kind of hanging around and he he joked with him a little bit. So uh, if anybody you know saw that introductory press conference from Mike McDonald and just thought that he's this no nonsense, always intense kind of guy, I would I would. Yeah, I would say that's not necessarily the case. We are starting to see kind of the lighter side of Mike McDonald. and On the field? During practice? No, no, not not on the field. But certainly afterwards and just in those in those press conference settings where he's up there talking about football. I think he just seems more comfortable there. I am a little curious how he individualizes his relationship with players over time. I yeah. think I kind of am starting to get a sense of who he is big picture. Curious to see what that looks like on those individual relationships with players. It is a fascinating question because I think that is probably what Pete Carroll did best right. as a coach was – X's and O's aside, you know, speeches aside, rah rah. It was the individual relationships and you know making players feel comfortable and getting getting as much out of those guys as possible. Okay, number four, the music is not as loud. Now that's not really the observation that's leading into the real observation here. So the music is not as loud at training camp, or excuse me, at uh, at these OTAs. And I don't know if that is a, a philosophical thing or if it's a product of the fact that they're trying to install new offense and new defense and they're really in teaching mode right now but one of the byproducts of that is that when you're watching practice you can hear a lot more you can hear the cadence you can hear a quarterback go through his cadence before Mm -hmm. the play you can also hear coaches coach these guys and one thing i've noticed is that these coaches are willing to coach these players really hard and you hear things that you didn't always hear what kinds of things under Coaching them hard, like getting on players, not not like browbeating them, but just those you, you hear cuss words. And and again, the music was always really loud at Seahawks practices under Carroll. So that may have been happening there. I get the sense that Carroll always told his coaches like, hey, you get more out of these guys when you are teaching them as opposed to acting like a drill sergeant and, and berating them. And I'm not saying these coaches are berating players, but you hear them coaching him hard. I heard Mike McDonald the other day. It was during a, a seven on seven drill and he's kind of watching the defense and he says something to the effect of you got to clean this bleep up. And, and you know what he, he was getting mad because guys weren't lined up right. And he's yelling at him saying, what, what are we in? What are we in? You know, you hear a different coaching style, <laughs> I think, than you heard previously that you saw previously in the Carroll era. And you know, there's going to be positives and negatives to that, right? The positives are they should be a whole lot more disciplined and prepared. You would think so. Uh, the negatives are, you know, guys can tune that out at times. So yeah. curious to see what that I looks like. I think there's like. a balance there. Yep. Certainly. Yep. Uh, number three, we talked about this during blue 88. I think Jackson Smith and Jigba is a legitimate, legitimate breakout candidate this year. I mentioned, uh, the one practice we saw last week, the second of the three open OTAs, he was downright dominant. Caught, by my count, eight touchdown passes between the 7-on-7 seven seven and 11-on-11 11 11 periods. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, they are doing a lot more of that, uh, a lot more of those team periods. So you guys are guys do have a chance to really shine like that. This is also the point of the offseason where it's really set up for pass catchers to shine because defensive players aren't making plays on the ball to the degree that they will and when training camp starts and you start to get the pads on and contact is allowed. But Jackson Smith and Jigba, he just looks like he is becoming Geno Smith's go-to guy. Uh, if I'm in Vegas, honestly, Mike, and if I'm a Vegas odds maker and I'm setting the over-under on yards this season for Jackson Smith and Jigba, I'm probably going around 900, maybe even closer to 1,000. He looks like he could be legitimate <laughs> breakout candidate uh, maybe not a pro bowl type guy just because you're going to have guys catching 13 1400 yards receiving but he looks like a guy who really could break out in year two and i've i mentioned it during blue 88 the one thing i heard about him from somebody in the building about you know sort of how his rookie season went last year was that 
Starting out, he very much looked like a rookie, like the typical rookie. And then as the season went on, the practice habits got better. Yeah. The study habits got better. And you heard Mike McDonald say last week, his practice habits are really if where they need to be. all that happens, I wonder what a future contract situation looks like for Mr. Metcalf. We will see. Uh, okay, number, what is this? Are two. we on number two already? Number two. Okay, so going back to the idea that the music isn't as loud. Yes. And you hear more than you would typically hear when the music is blaring. Devin Weatherspoon's energy really stands out because you For can sure. because you can not only see it but you can hear it every, every time he's coming off the field uh, or even when he's on the field and you know he he breaks up a pass or he even uh, I saw him the other day he was he was in coverage on I can't remember who the receiver was but he was he locked him up and it looked like Geno Smith wanted to go that receiver's way and then Devin Weatherspoon said uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> and then he let Geno Smith hear about it afterwards <laughs> barking at him. Coming off the sideline after a, you know, if the defense has a bad series, he's cursing and he's yeah he's downright mad mm-hmm. and uh, he just is. I think he's going to become the personality of this defense and I think he's really the the one guy on that defense that um, really is that kind of big type of personality. All right, number one, number one, it's Geno Smith versus Sam Howell. I think going back to the idea that there's a lot more of these eleven on eleven, seven on seven team periods. It really illustrates the fact that there's a gap between those guys, and, and there is not a quarterback competition in Seattle, and, and there, nor should there be, based on what I've seen. The other interesting part of that is uh, it's the personality types, and we've heard. Uh, I think Brock has made this point because, of course, his nephew played for Ryan Grubb, and we heard Ryan Grubb himself say mm-hmm. it. We heard the quarterback say it that Ryan Grubb really demands presence out of these guys. Geno Smith has it, and I'm not quite as sure that right now Sam Howell has it. He's a lower key guy. And you just hear it in the press conference. You can see the difference between them on the field. You can also hear the difference between them when you hear these guys talk at these press that's conferences. That's a pretty good rank right there. That's Brady Henderson ranking his top five observations from Seahawks practice. Somehow you managed to miss what Byron Murphy looks like in shorts. That guy's got to get bigger shorts. He's he not skipping leg day. He is. Sure. He is a differently built dude. Yeah.